guys uh, we all know how much important soft skill is right and when we talk about soft skill we generally can't define soft skill as such that what exactly is soft skill right and in many of the times uh, when we talk about technical skills when we talk about any particular hard skills there are chances we define them we can uh, make them right but in soft skills uh, it is not possible for us to define so my first question to everyone i'll i'll keep on sharing my screen and sometimes i'll stop sharing my screen the entire session will be interactive my first question to everyone if anyone and everyone can write in the chat box what is soft skill for them you can keep your cameras on if you want it can be more of an interactive if you want to talk please feel free to unmute and then talk uh, we'll be more than happy to keep it interactive skills which use um, emotional intelligence um, and behavioral approaches right right yes to some extent true have empathy to earth yes right so let me start by giving an example okay so let's say we all are working right we know our core jobs right we know how to play a game we know how to uh, solve a puzzle we know how to get a work done a ic technician knows how to get a work done a coder know how to code and stuff like that right what is soft skill is it is the way how you interact with others while playing how will we play with others while you know how the job is being done soft skill in short is interpersonal and professional personal attributes to get your work done excellent s tahalua has written soft skills refer to personal attributes interpersonal abilities and communication skill that enables individual to interact interact effectively in an harmonious live with others unlike hard skill which is specific technical or job related abilities extremely right extremely to the point unlike hard skills which are specific teachable soft skills are not like that it is how a person works and interacts with others it uh, already as talawa has written about communication it also talks about teamwork it also talks about problem solving right now one by one we will talk about few of the soft skills in the entire communication today we will talk about five to six soft skills because the soft skill as a uh, training as a subject is huge we will only touch base four five points which will help us four five major points which will help us understand what soft skill is our main objective is to be aware of technicalities and approaches of techniques how we can utilize soft skill in our business we will be talking about few examples we will share few personal examples real life examples which will help all of us to understand right we'll go to our first slide over the entire tenure of one hour we will be talking about these six things communication negotiation <coughs> negotiation skills relationship building problem solving and decision making adaptability and ethical judgment over all these we will talk about approaches techniques examples we all know the importance of all these we will touch base but that will not go in depth should i start sure sir yes sir please go ahead okay now when we talk about communication yes, proceed what is communication in the process 
of procurement it does not only talk about a source a channel and a receiving end let's say during a team meeting one can explain a new project plan to a colleague if he or she has the right communication skill by using simple language providing a clear outlining these ways a person can effectively communicate to the other person right now when we talk about communication in this particular webinar we'll talk about three parts of communication verbal communication non verbal communication and written communication when we talk about communication there are five main things that we have to keep in mind right what are the five main skills uh, five main things that we have to keep in mind first and foremost a sender who is sending a message a message a medium a receiver and a feedback these are the five main steps of communication it is a process of exchanging information ideas thoughts feelings with not only two but more individuals involved right now let's talk about verbal communication what is verbal communication now please feel free to i am again stopping the screen please feel free to start writing in the chat or unmute and start talking what is verbal communication when do we use verbal communication guys are you there yeah 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 yes yeah, sir yeah whenever there is, is it audible uh, sir yeah yeah very much audible i hope i am audible and i'm not making all people sleep yeah yeah sure sure sir you are audible so can you hear tamba sir please go ahead yeah so i think uh, when whenever there is a medium proper channel then we can do the uh, verbal communication yeah so face to face meeting is a verbal communication yeah while facing face -face or uh, or any channel we have for example teams or zoom then we can exactly. do the communication exactly yeah and what do we understand from a verbal communication what what are the few things that after verbal communication we can understand from a person the body language exactly very nice we can understand the body language of a person we can understand their confidence yeah confidence level yes we can understand expressions yes emotion exactly whether he is willing to accommodate our request yeah intention of the person also we understand exactly exactly right now in procurement right or or in in general right while talking to a person or in verbal language or communication we have to have few things in place when we talk about techniques or approaches right first and foremost is active listening what is active listening paying full attention to the speaker and avoiding interruption reflecting on the message and confirm understanding before responding to that person that is what the first technique or the first approach we should have which is active listening do all people agree with that do you think active listening is the most important uh, one of the most important approach or technique we should uh, use during verbal communication Yes. Yes. Now coming to the second part. Second 
one of the most important approaches is clarity and brevity. What do you mean by clarity and brevity? The message should be unambiguous. Okay. Very uh, nice. Say it in, 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 plain, in plain language if you want. In plain in language. Language. Yes, not jargon. If yeah. I am a procurement person, I will not talk about PR, PO, invoice. I will not use languages which are particularly to procurement, which a supplier may not be aware. I will not be using languages. For example, I am from a hospital background. I know what machines are used in a hospital. I know what type of environment is in hospital. I just can't say this machine will be used in OPD. The person may not be able to understand what is OPD. So I will say this machine will be used for outdoor patient department where visit uh, patients will come and show and stay, show to the doctor and leave and they will not get hospitalized. Is there any, any portion of it where uh, your people are not able to understand? Please, you can raise your uh, hands, you can ask questions. I am going slow so that all the points are very clearly understood by your people. Second question and second mostly, third most important point is asking open-ended questions. Don't ask questions with yes, no, okay, yes, no. Ask questions which will help the person say, Let's say you are a procurement professional at a retail company, right? And you are meeting with a supplier to discuss the product quality. Instead of asking open no questions, use questions like, can you walk us through the steps to ensure how you keep the quality of the product in check? Can you take me through the journey of how I get the product from the farm? or how the, this fabric has been manufactured. With questions like this, the supplier will be able to answer in an open-ended way. This way, you can gauge the verbal communication of that person. Am I clear? No, yeah. In addition, just watch, yes, in clear. addition to 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 open ended questions, it is also possible to ask what we call uh, probing questions or a closed question. See, probing questions is what right. Probing question is one of those questions where you can ask questions and they can answer. But closed ended questions becomes one word question, two word question. Right? Okay, yes, thank you. Okay, these are closed ended questions. When you are asking closed ended questions, it is very tough to understand the or let the other person open up during verbal communication. Clear? Then we will go to the next one that is non-verbal communication. Please feel free to write what do you think mean by non-verbal communication? Again, I'll pause for 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Please feel free to write in the chat. Please unmute and talk. What is nonverbal communication for you? Body expression, yes. Body language is the nonverbal communication. Uh, any symbol used, that can be also nonverbal communication. Of course, yes. Yes, silence is also a body language. Yes, facial expression, Sorry, eye contact. Yes, background speaking. tone. Yes, gestures. Yeah, so now we will talk about what are the techniques and approaches we should use while talking to a person. And what are the techniques to improve the nonverbal communication? First and foremost, 
we have to maintain an eye contact. Guys, this is one of the most important attributes of improving a nonverbal communication. Eye contact talks about engagement, talks about communication, confidence, and of course, the sincerity with which you are communicating. Then comes open posture. While you are talking to someone, please make sure you are communicating with him in a nonverbal communication that you are not sitting like this, this, you are not uh, putting your ear, ear or watching the clock when this person will stop talking. This gives a poor signal to the other person that okay, the other person is not interested. So these are all nonverbal communication. Facial expression, I just told you. I'm talking to you and you're like, okay, yeah, sure, 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 sure. And you're moving your head. That means the 12 people are not interested. The other person is not interested while communicating. Am I, am I generally verbal and nonverbal kind of communication go together? Yeah, right. Very true. Very true. Right? Tone of voice and pauses. Yes. Tone and tone of voice and pauses pauses as well. I, I recently went to a, a, a shop, okay, for getting some things and there was another person and that person was bar bargaining and after that, the, okay. after the bargain is over, the shopkeeper handed over the material to that person and that person looked at the shopkeeper and told, thank you. What does it signify? The person is not interested in saying thank you. Right? You are understanding, right? What I'm trying to say? Any doubts so far? No. Okay. Then we will come to one of the most important communication part that is written communication. And why for us who are procurement professionals, written communication is one of the most important aspect. In many of the cases, we have seen that we may not be able to see the supplier, our clients, but whatever we are writing is portraying us, our background, our standards of communication to the other person. Please understand, written communication means documenting something as clear as this. As a professional, whenever we are using a written communication, we are documenting. Drafting a purchase order is a written communication. Communicating about the supplies is a written communication. And it provides a permanent record. So in the written communication, we have to make sure there is clarity, accountability in our communication. And there are certain ways, techniques by which we can also improve our written communication. One is structure. While communicating, please make sure the document that we are making have a structure, subject, body, conclusion. If we are writing to someone who do not know the background, there should be a small gap which will talk about the background of that specific topic. Try to be specific to the point. Let's not beat around the bush. If we are trying to put an RFP, the RFP clearly specified, should specify the quantity, should specify the delivery timeline, product specification, so that there should be no ambiguity. What will happen? The supplier will respond accurately. It will save time and there'll be no follow-up clarification. Clear? While we're communicating about the body structure, we're talking about the structure of the communication, always use headings, bullet points, short passages, so that it becomes easy for the other person to read. The third most important part, while written communication, 
is proofreading. What is proofreading? It talks about your grammatical errors, your punctuations. While reviewing, you will get these done. I'll just type one thing in the chat box, okay? What does it say? Can you see my chat? Yes. You know the difference? You can understand the difference? Am I making sense? Yes, yes. So while we are talking about any communication, please make sure we proofread. I'm just writing a message, okay? What did I write? Please read what did I write? Anyone can read it loudly? Yes, uh, some people enjoy cooking their families and their dogs. What does it mean? Yeah, this is not very clear. Now what did I write? You said some people enjoy cooking their families and their dogs. I'm good. You understood what I'm trying to say, right? Exactly. Now I understand what you're trying to say, but it should be a four. Yes, yes, yes. Is somebody Neto? Is it Neto so, Suda? Yeah. Comma. That's correct. Correct. The commas are missing and the exactly yes. Four is like the intent is right, but sometimes we when we are typing our uh, letters or drafting news. I intend to do the same thing. I usually eat up few words and then I don't realize it and, and you yes. realize it later. So yes, proofreading is very important. Yeah. Right. And you know, I will talk about the approaches. One of the approach for verbal communication is try to role play. Talk to your colleagues, your friends that if they are supplier, what type of questions they would have asked. If you are a vendor, what type of questions you would have asked the vendor? Second is feedback loop. Try to get feedback from people. As much as possible, whether you are writing it properly, what are the, what are the process that will help you grow is your feedback loop. For nonverbal communication, use mirror practice. Please stand in front of the mirror, talk. You will be able to understand where you are faltering. And one of the most important part is for writing communication is peer review. Before finalizing, please give it to your 
colleagues, your friends to go through it to understand whether things are okay or not. It will help you know where the mistakes are. Am I clear? Yeah. Yes, sir. Now we will go to the next topic. We will talk about approaches and techniques of negotiation in procurement. The role of it in procurement. Now, when we say negotiation, it is not only about money or price. It is about interest of both the parties. Agree or not? It is not actually always about money. It is about interest of every parties. About what? About interest of both the parties. Right? So when we talk about negotiation, it is a cornerstone of procurement. Almost every aspect of procurement requires negotiation. And what are the process with which we can do negotiation? What are the approaches we should take for negotiation is what we will discuss. First and foremost, one of the most important way to start the negotiation is preparation. When we talk about preparation, we talk about preparation to understand your need. It is not exactly only to know about the supplier. When we talk about preparation, we work on preparation, we are working on our need. Let's say we as a procurement professional, we are a global electronic company and we need some rare earth material. There are so many requirements for our global electronic company, right? So even before entering negotiation, we should gather data on market pricing, supplier financials, industry trends, and other geopolitical issues that might affect the availability of that particular material. And if with which we can understand the supplier's position and setting clear objectives for the price, for the delivery terms, for the process of those will help and of course quality standards. This will help us secure favorable terms with a reliable supply chain. Is it clear? Preparation is one of the most important dynamics when we talk about negotiation. Second comes best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Let me write it down for you. I have written a small uh, short form. What is this best alternative to negotiated agreement? Let's say you are a fabric manufacturer or a, uh, you are talking to a fabric supplier and you understood, you realized the prices are higher in the suppliers than the industry average. What we will do? We will explore other suppliers. We will look for other suppliers in different regions. And what will happen? We will ensure there is a backup plan for us. What will happen then? If at all, we could not meet the target price of with which with whom we are negotiating, then we can fall back on the other alternatives which we have. That is BATNA, best alternative to
to a negotiated agreement. Is this clear? Yeah. Anyone has any doubt? Any questions can ask. Another interesting, uh, uh, another interesting uh, approach is strategic concession. What is strategic concession? It is about creating a sense of reciprocity. Matlab, what does that mean? Let's say. You are a company and you are in discussion with a logistics provider of, with a for a contract renewal, let's say. Okay. The, now you as a procurement team is offering to extend the contract by three years or four years or five years. And while doing it, you are asking ki, I will increase your tenure if you reduce your annual uh, logistics cost, annual transportation cost. So what happens once you are trying to give a long term benefit to the vendor in return, you are trying to gain through some other way. Is it making sense? Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. Another approach which we can go for is anchoring approach. What is anchoring approach? So it is about setting the initial offer to steer the negotiation in your favor. For let's say you are negotiating with a supplier for um, some raw material, let's say. Okay. I hope, okay, someone just pinged, I'm so sorry. I hope the soft copy training material manual will be given to all participants at the end of the session. Of course, you will get the recordings if I'm not wrong. I mean, okay. So let's say what I was talking about is a anchoring process. What is anchoring process? So in a negotiation, let's say you are negotiating with some raw material supplier, right? Now, you will, you know, you have done the preparation that what is the average market cost, right? Average uh, cost of the material. And you will start much, much below the cost. Let's say the cost is 1000 rupees. You will start with 700 rupees. This is process is known as anchoring. Based on the analysis and the production, you will know what the cost is. And the low anchor cost will set the tone for negotiation. What will happen? Then it will then allow the the, the supplier to go for much lesser cost than what he was expecting because you have already started with a much lower cost. Am I making myself clear? Yes. Anyone has any doubt about anything? It's clear. Oh, awesome. Another important approach we will talk about is flexibility. What is flexibility in negotiation? It is one of the alternatives and solutions which will help in problem solving for both the parties. Let's give an example. An F&B company, let's say you are a food and beverage company, okay? And you have a tight delivery. Why? Due to supply shortage. Now what will happen? You are communicating with the vendor stating that if the delivery is given at this particular TAT turnaround time, since the supplier is not able to provide, then you can say, okay, if you give due to some shortage deadline, if you are agreeing to adjust the deadline and give me at much early rather than the deadline, there are chances I will reduce the cost. Instead of five days time, you need it in three days. And you tell if you give it in three days, there'll be 5% reduction. There'll be one year's extension. 
in this way your flexibility is being shown to the vendor and you are negotiating with the vendor with the flexibility these are the main approaches and te and techniques of negotiation one of the important part of one of the important aspect of soft skill is relationship building what is relationship building what are the ways of relationship building can anyone give us a brief can anyone just type can anyone just say what is relationship building win win situation okay mutual understanding okay relationship building right conflict resolution building trust very right developing trust empathy so when we talk about relationship building we generally not only talk about vendor or supplier we talk about all our maintaining good vendor with sincerity for a long time right seeing each other in dignity right see whenever we talk about relationship building we not only talk about maintaining it with vendor we talk about maintaining it with our stakeholders maintaining with our internal com com uh, colleagues am i am i making sense relationship building is not only with vendor it is about making a relationship with everyone right a mutually beneficial connection right very rightly said right now what are the techniques and approaches for a sound relationship management first and foremost one of the most important part is consistency and reliability what do you mean by consistency and reliability whenever you are a supplier we are coordinating with a supplier when you see a supplier is continuously delivering the material on time every time then you understand yes there is a commitment as a result the reliability increases if the reliability increases you can depend on that person depend on that vendor and there is a consistency consistency building of trust this increases your relationship building someone told active listening very very right we have seen that let's say there was a vendor and every time after the material is being sent we give him the money but once we have not given the money and we told the vendor our problem there are few amount of cost which are involved and that is not come to us we are waiting for that cash and the vendor understood he listened to us with empathy and he told okay please pay me from the next time onwards this active listening builds your relationship regular communication regular communication is one of the most important and underrated practices with your suppliers with your vendors with your colleagues one hi one hello a sweet note over email during christmas holidays diwali and other festivities which may not be important may not be urgent 
but goes a long way. It builds trust. It talks that you are communicating with them even though there is no such need right now. Proactive engagement. Talking to the supplier, talking to the vendor about your upcoming demand. About your projection. Telling the vendor that what you need in the coming days. This helps in relationship building with the particular vendor. Because now the vendor knows that you are depending on him. And you have proactively shared your thoughts. Proactively engage with them. Am I making myself clear? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Am I clear? Yes. Any doubt? No, not a doubt. But yes. uh, I don't know if you'll address cultural differences. I, I am from a collective culture. And some cultures are in individual, and so in some cases, too much communication, um, too regularly. Some people may um, not perceive it in the same way. I'm I'm from the West Indies, and you're in India. We have similar cultures, and I would expect regular communication. But when I am, I'm engaging with persons in different. Um, agree, agree. Cultural sensitivity is very important. Thank you. I strongly agree. See, we have to understand how we have to deal with it, right? Understanding and respecting the cultural differences in communication and business practice strengthens your, strengthens your relationship, right? I'll give you an example. I was working with a Japanese client and the Japanese client don't do things so fast that okay tomorrow I'll do this day after day I'll do, tomorrow I'll do this no they take their time they first get your material they'll talk, tell all their bosses to come they will tell all your seniors to come they'll sit together they'll have a formal introduction they will avoid a overtly aggressive thought process and words then they will start they understand the long-term relationship. They will make note of everything and come back maybe after 15 days, which would have, would have been done another seven days. But that is how the culture of Japan is. And if you respect that, it will be mutually beneficial for your company and their company. It will enhance your collaboration for your long-term success. Extremely right, Alan. Thank you. Any, 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 anyone has any questions, then we'll go to the next one. Anyone has any questions, any doubts? No, it's awesome. We have completed two important aspects. One is we have completed communication, negotiation, and relationship building. Now, one of the important part is problem solving and decision making. What is that we are looking forward right now? What is that problem that we're trying to solve? And how we will choose our next course of action? Right? What is problem solving? It is about identifying issues or some challenge within the process and finding the effective solution for that. As clear as it. Right? Slides are not visible. Okay, one minute. There is no such slide as such, but yeah. I'll just... Uh, 
share. I want it to be uh, much more. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, it is. I want to keep it much more uh, interactive. So I have not uh, done much slides or want to talk about slides because what is uh, problem solving decision making and what I will talk about problem solving decision making. These are what the slide is. What I'm trying to interact with your people is to make your people aware about the techniques, about the approaches. Nothing more than that. The uh, the interaction you will enrich will get the uh, entire recording of this. So I don't think it will be a problem for your people. What I am trying to do is to talk to you as much as possible, interact with you so that the doubts are getting cleared. Right? What is problem solving? It is identifying issues and challenges and working on it. Right? The finding the solution to address them. That is problem solving. What is decision making? It is choosing the best course of action. As simple as that. Right? Best course of action from where? From various alternative options that we have. Right or wrong? I am trying to make it as simple as possible for your people. Am I making sense? Anyone has any questions? Now we will talk about what are the approaches and techniques we can take towards this problem solving and decision making. First and foremost approach for any problem solving is RCA, root cause analysis. What is RCA? How many of you heard of the term 5Y? How many of you heard of the term 5Y? Have anyone heard of the term 5Y? No, I haven't. Okay. Anyone can explain what is 5Y? No. Harish, Mahendra, Ghansham. Just uh, asking the questions till we get an answer. So, I mean, by answering different why, so uh, we can actually get up to uh, the final root cause, and it's a scientific proven uh, way. So, that's why uh, we generally call it as a five why. Awesome. Um, noise are coming, most probably from Harish, I'm not sure. Asking question to five ways to get answer. Yeah. You get so to the I root think, asking why. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, whenever we are in any problem, so to find out uh, or to go to the root cause, we need to ask various questions like why, 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 until we go to the root cause. Right, right. Can anyone give an example? Uh, for example, if we are working in any manufacturing company and uh, one of the machines is not working or it's yeah. giving uh, the problem uh, in regular intervals, then we need to find out that why this machine is giving the issues. Then we need to go and ask questions like why, why this is uh, happening daily or uh, on regular basis. So until we get the root cause of that problem, we need to... Uh, ask various questions like why, 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 why. I am late for work. Okay, today I'm late for work. Why? I woke up late. I wake up at six o'clock, but I, today I woke up at seven o'clock. I woke up late. Why? Because the alarm didn't work. The alarm was not working. Why? The battery was not there. The battery got exhausted. Why? I forgot to check. I forgot to see where the battery got exhausted. So with five whys, 
I could understand why I am late at work. Am I clear? Yes, it is. Okay. So one of the most important way of way of a uh, uh, way would be wrong word approach of problem solving and decision making is root cause analysis. Another is SWOT analysis. What is SWOT analysis? Can anyone tell? I'm sure uh, the people who already the participants who already know five why they must be knowing SWOT. What is SWOT analysis? SWOT uh, analysis basically means uh, identifying the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And it helps us in decision making, right? Yes, yes. Right. So any SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunity, strength, uh, opportunities, and threats helps us in decision making or finding a solution for a broader impact. One of the other way of problem solving and decision making is cost benefit analysis. What is cost benefit analysis? Mahindra, Harish, Yansham, Prashanjit. Can I, can I say something, sir? Yes, I'm uh, David Odiogudepe from Nigeria. Uh, when you look at uh, cost-benefit analysis, from my own understanding, it tells you if you invest in a project, yeah. what benefits will you derive? Will that project be viable for you to invest your resources in, into it? If not, then you back out. So I think that is my understanding of cost benefit analysis. Absolutely right. Thank you, sir. It is someone Harish has written used to measure the benefit of a decision or action minus the associated cost to determine whether it is a worthwhile. Excellent. What is the benefit of the expenditure? Exactly. It tries to look at the benefit derived from the consumption of a particular product. Am I making clear? These are great approaches for problem solving and decision making. Many of the times we overlook these because we are so engrossed in our hard skills, in our technical skills, we forget these soft skills. These are one of the most important aspects of understanding. Data-driven decision-making, critical thinking are most important aspects of soft skills, which we generally forget, tend to forget. Another most important part is brainstorming and cross-functional collaboration. It helps us understand other person's perspective. Am I making myself clear? Yes, sir. Okay. We are already running short of time. So I was wondering do all people really want some other topics? Let's say ethical judgment in procurement, adaptability in procurement, or we should stop here. Sir, I have no problem if you continue with that. Okay. Let's start with, let's, let's do one more topic. That is ethical judgment. What is ethical judgment in procurement? There are two ways of looking anything in ethics. One is legally compliant and one is morally sound. When we talk about ethical judgment, it refers to the ability to make decisions 
that are both legally compliant and morally sound, considering the broader impact of the society and the environment. Am I making myself clear? Yes, sir. You're... Yes. Okay. So, ethical judgment in procurement talks about two things. Legally compliant, that is, it not I think uh, my uh, speaker, it is showing host is muting my speaker. I'm not sure. Okay, fine. So when we talk about ethical judgment, it talks about you are not only legally compliant, but you are morally sound. Right? And now we will talk about how we can increase the ethical judgment of us, our team members in general. One of the approach is having the proper code of ethics defined by the organization. This will help us clear several ambiguity in the system. Second is making a lot of training, having ongoing training and awareness programs to ensure the procurement staffs understand the ethical standards and how to apply them. It helps in developing case studies. Please de understand that if you put examples, it helps the readers to understand, okay, this is not right, this is right. I'll give you one example. If a supplier is being told that all the people in the company will not take gift from supplier, which is more than 300 rupees. That means you have outlined it in your policy. What will happen? It will help us as an organization to abide by it. Because we have made a code of ethics. We have made a policy out of it. Am I making myself clear? Yes, sir. Let's say, okay, another important part is transparency. Whenever we are making an announcement that we will do something, we will make sure we will go for a bidding, we'll go for a procurement process. If we publicly share our bidding document, selection criteria, decision-making process openly, which is open for scrutiny, what will happen? It will help us prevent corruption because our documents are openly available. In many of the cases, we forget these type of ethical judgments. Let's say a company is acquiring other company, a company is uh, having a tie up with other company, going for a joint venture with other company and they do a due diligence. And in the due diligence, they found that the other company is having child labor. Is it ethically right or wrong? It's wrong, sir. Right? So due diligence is one of the way to understand an approach and technique to understand whether ethics is being maintained or not. Conflict of interest. What is conflict of interest? I am holding a power of position and my vendor is also holding a power of position because he is my brother. And all the materials are being supplied by the vendor. How can we prevent it? A document, a policy document, which will state Boss, as per the company policy, no interested parties, your immediate relatives can be a part of the vendor. How to know whether still that is being happening or not? Third party audit. Get audit from outside. Another great approach, third party audit to understand whether ethics are being maintained or not. Whistleblower mechanism. What is whistleblower mechanism? 
establishing anonymous reporting channels for employers to raise ethical concerns without any fear of fear that there might be chances of retaliation. No. We have clear whistleblower policy. And another very uh, new approach that has come is we call it uh, ethical performance awards. Any any vendor, any supplier, if we find over the few months, few years, he's doing ethically great, we should award them by making key metrics of the supplier evaluation. We have to award them that okay, this supplier do not have any labor practice, they are not impacting the environment. They are adhering to the fair trade. They are uh, giving minimum wages. There is no child labor involved. So we can award them. These are the approaches which we can do for bringing ethics in procurement. In the entire communication, in the entire process of the training, I have not told what is the importance of communication, importance of ethical judgment, importance of negotiation. We all know that. What over this entire one hour training webinar, what we tried to make everyone understand is how approaches and techniques can help us grow as a procurement professional. Soft skills are the most important aspect of procurement. If you go to a LinkedIn report, if you go to any of the uh, um, uh, skill report, you will see how much people are pushing for communication, how much people are pushing for verbal communication, non-verbal communication. Is uh, anyone from ISM here? Hello. Is anyone from ISM here? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Okay. So there's a question in the chat box that to share the video with uh, the participants. I hope that will be done, right? Yeah, we will share the video and the presentation as well uh, with all the participants. Awesome. Anyone has any questions, please raise. Anyone wants training for soft skills, please communicate to uh, ISM. They'll be more than happy to uh, do training for your people. If your people want to reach out to me, please feel free to reach out. I'm just putting my mail ID. So that anyone at any point of time wants to uh, connect with me, please feel free. Anyone has any doubts in this particular session, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to uh, clarify it. Guys, if you have any query, then you, you can ask to the sir. Someone wrote, uh, can you repeat moral ethics? Moral ethics compliance. Okay. See, uh, we have to understand what is ethics and what is compliance. Morals, principles, values are different and compliance is different. Compliance is an act of confirming to the rules and regulations which are set by an authority. And ethics, moral principles is personal. It includes honesty, integrity, fairness. So those are two different aspects, but aspects of the same coin. Am I clear? 
Yes, sir. Maybe ask the participants to uh, put the camera on for maybe 30 seconds. We can take a small snap and send it to ISM. Anyone has any doubt, please feel free to reach out to ISM. We'll be more than happy to help you all people. We from ISM, ISM do corporate trainings as well for soft skills. So anyone who wants corporate trainings as well can please reach out to ISM. Anyone has any questions or we can wind up the training? I have a question, sir. Yeah, please. Yes, I I am David Bodiogunipe from Nigeria, West African country. And uh, my question is just very simple. Uh, I observe that ISM has always been using uh, same resource person from the same continent. Uh, can't you decentralize your resource person and equally pick from other parts of the world like Nigeria as your resource person in ISEM? I don't know whether you understand me, sir. No, I'm not able to. I, what I mean is, can't you equally pick your resource person from other parts of the world, apart from using same resource person? Let me take, say, for instance, from uh, India. Why not pick your equally your resource person from Nigeria, from other African so, countries? Yes. So uh, I, I think ISM has several other branches. So ISM US uses ISM uh, resources of ISM US. ISM uh, UK will use uh, for that. And this is ISM India, part of the ISM US. So they uh, use local resources for their processes. If uh, ISM, I'm not sure if ISM is there in Nigeria, West Kenya or, or stuff like that, Africa, uh, then definitely I'm sure they will do it. And if not, if you are people need any support from ISM India as well, please feel free to write to us. We'll be more than happy to support and help. Okay. It's all right, sir. It is clear, sir. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Anyone, any questions? Or Shubham, we can wrap it up now? Uh, yes, sir, we can uh, wrap up now. Thank you for sharing the uh, knowledge with all the participants. Uh, thank you. All. Th thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, Shubham, for organizing this. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe thank people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a wonderful thank session. Thank you. Bye. Maybe maybe thank you for your round up your, your presentations there. Maybe it's, it's to firstly appreciate um, the capacitation which you are receiving from you. Really, I'm getting much of um, insightful. Um, in Eswatini, the procurement uh, is still not stable. So you find that the profession, I was really still longing to go for India because of, I was seeing so many things coming to my emails, just having that interest, how can I? So today I'm so happy to join. It's my first time. I used to get this notification, but today I managed because my office was not that busy. 
Uh, I hope to join and to get so many things. There are so things that I even came across to it today as you were teaching us. Yeah, the five whys. Yeah, open questions. I, I'm, I'm seeing that I was just uh, frustrating myself, even the suppliers too, because I was just giving them one word answer, which was not professional. I'm so happy. Good that we have made some uh, important uh, 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 presentations and it helped you all people. We are we are extremely happy. I mean, thinking that okay, great, we have touched some some aspects of the uh, requirements which you all people have. If you all people need any support in groups in batches, please reach out to ISM. If your organizations need any help, please reach out to ISM. We do group sessions. We talk about different sort of uh, um, uh, soft skills. We talk about emotional intelligence, change management, critical thinking, time management, conflict management, unconscious bias, persuasion. We do a several lot of topics, very interesting topics. Yeah. Thank you, guys.